Greetings, Glitter Gang, and happy Thursday. It's 2 o'clock on Thursday, June 30th, 2022. This is Catherine Scraps Live. My name is Catherine, and today we're going to be working on the Vintage Staples album. We have two more layouts to do, plus inserts in between those layouts. We did start working on a pocket last week. We experienced a number of connectivity issues last week. And so I think I'm just going to start over. Um, I'm going to walk through um, what my plan was and what I was doing um, in the middle of doing, but I think I'll just, um, I'm just going to redo it. Um, and I, and we'll just trash the recordings from last week. Uh, cause they are not really salvageable. Okay. Um, in addition to that, did I have a good weekend? I had a good weekend. I'm exhausted. I almost didn't do shows today. We may not have a show tonight. I know I have my summer nails. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm ready for the rest of summer relaxing. I have no more weddings to go to. I have no more major events. It's just me and the pool and the Goldilocks album and we'll have a fun time. So thank you so much. I had a lot of fun doing them. And I, this time, my, I painted my first coat a nude instead of a white and then I put white over the nude so that I would still be able to get the bright colors. And I think that's what I'm gonna do because I think when my hands are facing like this, the nude is better than the white but you let me know if you like the white better or the nude it's just one more step it's not that hard to do it either way but i do i think i like this better i think i like this better but we'll you know whatever um when did i get home i got home late on monday late on monday um i have messed up uh something in my left shoulder um Badly enough that this muscle right here is uh, just spasming periodically, just moving on its own. Um, so this muscle, this muscle right here, I don't know what that's about. Pain is pretty excruciating. Um, and I think I'm just, I, I don't know, I don't have enough energy <laughs> for uh, two cross country flights plus five wedding events in four days. I think that's just beyond my capabilities at this moment in time. It's important to be realistic about our limitations. <laughs> now I know that I just can't party like that anymore. I just can't, I just cannot party like that anymore. I, in the last week, there were two nights I didn't sleep at all. Literally did not sleep at all, okay? I went <laughs> without sleep hours twice in the last week and now I'm having connectivity problems again I'm over what's overloaded I just got a warning that something was overloaded and then it told and then it and then it disappeared so hopefully it's not overloaded anymore but uh <laughs> whatever happened seems to be done it's not uh ongoing so hopefully that was just a little blip um we have a plumbing issue that's still not resolved. The plumber is supposed to come today and resolve that, hopefully. And it's book club, everyone. All right. Today is the last Thursday of June. And so we will be discussing um, the book Deacon King Kong by James McBride. And uh, that is that book right there and when that is on the screen that means i'm actively talking about the book and there could be spoilers for the book so if you haven't read the book and you think you might want to one day then just mute while that's going on i promise i won't give any uh measurements or anything like that while i'm discussing that book um and while that thing is on the screen that thing being the cover of the book and then um next month is great circle by maggie shipstead uh, so that's next month's book, which we'll be discussing on July 28th, I believe, whatever the last Thursday of July is. And just as a heads up, this book is twice as long, Great Circle, 
as Deacon King Kong. So a great circle is twice as long. Uh, so, you know, make sure you pace yourself appropriately with great circle. It's not one that I think can just be left to the last minute. I think it's going to take some time. Um, so just be aware of that one. It did not win the women's prize. It was shortlisted. The winner was A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. All right. So just a reminder, all the books for this year have been chosen already. Um, this is them. This is the list. There are 13 books on this list. Our goal is to read 10 books a year. If a book is going to be cut, you know, um, you'll have plenty of advance notice that it's going to be cut. Um, if you were wondering what my criteria was for picking books this year, there, there were two. One is the book had to be known for being a good book club discussion book. So that was criteria number one. So I only looked at lists of books that were good for book club discussions. Okay. So that was number one. And then number two, I wanted to pick books that were as different from each other as possible. Um, so I wanted to read 12, and I initially chose 12 books. There's 13. We'll talk about that in a second. I wanted to read 12 books that were very different from each other, okay? And so um, the last three books that we read, The Island of the Sea Women, The Lager Queen of Minnesota, and Deacon King Kong, those books were all very different from each other. So I do feel like... <laughs> I do feel like I have accomplished what I set out to accomplish in terms of the books not feeling the same. But I, I don't know. I mean, I, I know what possessed me to choose a James McBride book for book club, which is that I've enjoyed the James McBride books I've read in the past. Um, but I really just should have asked myself, like, how easy it would be to talk about it. <laughs> some of these books because I don't even I we'll get to it we'll get to it uh, there it was a lot there was a lot there was a lot happening in this book <laughs> there was a lot happening in this book um my goodness uh there was I mean I I enjoyed it so I mean I rated it I think four stars not my favorite James McBride but I I definitely really appreciate it I just, um, he, he packs a lot into less than 400 pages. He packs a lot into less than 400 pages. That's for sure. That's for sure. To even summarize the book, like the way everyone summarizes it is, um, you know, this community is rocked when one day a deacon from the church wakes up and goes out and shoots the most notorious drug dealer. Like that's how everyone describes it. And that happens. But is that the point of the book even I don't think it is so we'll talk about that um and and we may like I said we may have to push this um some of this discussion may happen on another day um so we we shall see uh how we how we do again I am dealing with some physical limitations today so we shall see but that's all the books for the rest of the year and then yes, Gretchen is in the chat and she won first place at a quilt show for a beautiful quilt. So congratulations to Gretchen. Um, that must be feeling good, feeling exciting. Okay, so hello everyone. Hello to Candy and Beverly. I hope you two are doing well. Skinny Cat, hello, hello. Carol Joan, good afternoon. Ella and Kathleen, hello to both of you wonderful ladies. Barbara Jean, hello as well. Melanie, happy glitter day. Uh, Mary, hi, how are you? Mary, there is a, um, I, don't, I don't remember if you go to politics and prose, but if you do, they, their YouTube channel has a, um, a recording of when James McBride went there to speak about Deacon King Kong. If you read that book, um, that is there. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to quickly go over what the plan was. And um, then this piece, which is the piece that needs the most explanation, I will redo 
as well as the next piece that goes on top of it, okay? And that's how we will get through it. So the plan was that, okay, so we have this piece, which is six and a half by eight and seven eighths, okay? So for those of you following along, six and a half by eight and seven eighths. And this piece, which is seven and a half by eight and seven eighths and scored at six and a half, okay? So seven and a half by eight and seven eighths scored at six and a half. And then the, this one was gonna hook onto this one like so, all right, like so, okay? Then this one is six and a half by eight and seven eighths as well, only this one is scored at five and a half. This one was gonna hook onto this other side. So it was gonna be like open, open, ta-da, like so, all right? Okay, and then this piece was gonna go on top of this piece and we were gonna make that X, an X pocket, okay? We were gonna make an X pocket. So what we're working on now is I'm gonna recreate this one from start to finish so that the whole thing is in one video. Hopefully nothing will go wrong today. All right, so let's start with how big of a piece uh, of whatever this needs to be, a big of a piece cardstock cardstock is the word i'm looking for all right okay so we have two people who couldn't get past the beginning of deacon king kong which i will say i did think the beginning i struggled with the beginning of this much more so than i struggled with the beginning of the good lord bird and um i think it was because of the number of characters I think it was because of the number of characters. There's two books that I had on my mind while I was reading Deacon King Kong, and they were A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James. It reminded me a lot of that book. And then the other, which is a book that's kind of about the assassination or attempted assassination of uh, Bob Marley, but actually is... A lot about growing up in Kingston and the Jamaican diaspora and, and, and sort of like more wide ranging than that. Um, but um, Marlon James has over 60 voiced characters in that book. So there's over 60 people you have to keep track of. And um, I didn't have any trouble whatsoever keeping track of who was who. Um, and in this book, Deacon King Kong, sometimes I did. Sometimes I was like, wait, which which sister is this or which guy who does maintenance is this or you know I, I just I didn't feel like the characters uh, the characterization was quite as easy for me to follow as um, as in A Brief History of Seven Killings and I only compare the two because of the sheer number of characters um, that's just why it popped into my head I think they're not like um, it's not like if you liked Deacon King Kong, you would necessarily like A Brief History of Seven Killings or vice versa. Um, if you didn't like them, you would not, not like them. Okay, so this piece is um, 10 and 7 eighths by six and a half. Okay, 10 and 7 eighths by six and a half. So I'm gonna cut a new one. Well, if nobody read it, we may not have to discuss it. Maybe I won't have to be smart today. That would be a relief for my tiny brain. Okay, all right. So we are gonna take this one, which is once, ag once again, this one is six and a half by 10 and seven eighths. So I think that um, in terms of approachability, 
I think the good Lord bird was much more approachable than this because um, you really start with two characters and then you kind of spiral out from there. So um, it, it, eases, it eases you in, um, but um, there like are a lot of characters by the end, but I feel like he doesn't throw as many characters at you all at once. So, all right, so this is once again, six and a half by 10 and seven eighths. We're gonna score on the six and a half inch side at five and a half. And we're gonna score on the 10 and seven eighths inch side at one and at nine and seven eighths. Okay. All right, so going to fold along all the score lines and burnish. <laughs> all right, so did anyone finish Deacon King Kong? And if you finished it, did anyone like it? <laughs> so, all right. So what, while everyone answers that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line that goes from this score line here to this score line here, okay? So we're going to make an X that goes from score line to score line. So not corner to corner, okay? Score line to score line. All right. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just use a pencil here. All right, so once again, just from the score line to the score line, okay? From the score line to the score line, not from the corner to the corner. Well, then I'll try not to do too many spoilers, Mary, when talking about it, since it sounds like, okay. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out, so you can see this X, we're gonna remove this top triangle, okay? Gonna remove this top, this top triangle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line my, and actually, let me get my glass mat. Yes, a lot of the characters have multiple names. Um, but um, I knew who everyone was, you know, I would say, oh, certainly had a really solid grasp of who everyone was by, um, by the time I was 20% or so in, max, max. Um, I would say, like I said, I don't, I gave it four stars and I think James McBride does great character work. My probably primary, it, um, let's, hold on, let me get, let me just finish this. All right. And so then I'm going to. Cut this other side out as well. And I'm trying to cut this as neatly as possible because I'm gonna use this piece. One of the things I think that James McBride does, and this is a general commentary on his work or certainly at least the works that I've read, is that he talks about very serious subjects, writes about very serious subjects, um, and is very funny. He's very funny. Um, and I saw an interview where someone asked him, now I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna use it 
on this side down here. And we're gonna make the matching pocket piece with this piece. Okay, so I'm just gonna just save that for a second. Um, so he, he, he tackles these very serious subjects. The Good Lord Bird is about um, the abolitionist uh, John Brown. And um, it starts in Kansas and um, is hilarious. <laughs> it's hilarious. And it sounds like it's also serious. You know, it's also serious. Um, but it's so funny. <laughs> so, um, and um, I think that allows him to, you know, tackle some stuff um, where people might have their guard up otherwise or something like that. Um, and he can just kind of slide it in, you know. All right. So we need now, we need three two inch strips. We need one that goes from this corner to this corner, which would be eight and seven eighths. And then we need one that's about this height, which is, you know, from, from here to here. And so that will be, uh, let's just call it three. So we'll do one that's nine inches and four that are three inches. All right. So we can probably get the four that are three inches out of these little smaller scraps. One, two, three. Let's do one, two, three, four. I'm gonna pull out this piece that I need to save. You can go over here. And then we need one that's a little bit longer. So I'm going to go start cutting these. I'm just going to cut them right here. So I'm going to cut a little two inch strip off of this one. And then we'll cut it to nine inches. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to put, um, put this at three inches and cut it at three inches so that I have nine left over. And then with these, I'm gonna go, what did I say, three inches on these? One of the things I'll talk about a little bit is just James McBride's style in general, which is that um, I like very much that he has a way of, um, he'll be in a very intimate moment or like a small community or something like that. That's where the, the narrative will be. And then every once in a while, he'll zoom way, he'll just spiral out. Um, and so he'll go from being tight on this community to just very quickly, almost like breathing in, he'll just pull, pull back, show you the wider world, and then he'll zoom right back in. Um, and they, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily last very long, you know, but it's a way of just quickly kind of contextualizing what's happening in whatever community he's looking at in a broader sense. Um, I think stylistically, you know, that's, that's interesting because you go from these more focused points of view to very unfocused points of view. Um, and it, it happens very quickly. It can happen in a paragraph. So, 
um, I can see how, you know, that could be something that people find odd maybe. Um, you know, I think that worked for me in this book for sure. And, you know, there were a few uh, sections where I highlighted, you know, where he would talk about like, I think there was one where he was just talking about everyone who had ever lived at any point in time in this area and like how the, you know, d the dynamics had changed from like it was the Italians and then the Irish and then the, you know, and like how everyone came in and maybe it was, I think part of one of the discussions might have been the ants. Um, when they were talking about the ants, you know, and there's these mystical ants um, and what they represent as well. You know, that's where we, we zoom way out. That was one of the instances where we zoom way out. Like we're just talking about a guy, a, a specific guy. And then all of a sudden we're talking about these ants and their journey and the history of these ants. You know, and of course, that probably makes no sense whatsoever <laughs> if you haven't gone to the part of the book with the ants. But, okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this here. So we're going to attach these two to each other. Okay. And I think the best way to do it will be to put the tape on the flap itself. So we're going to just add this tape. But yeah, I did see it. Like I said, I saw an interview with, uh, with him, I think for Good Morning America, maybe something like that, where they asked what would most surprise people if they read the book. And he said that it was funny, um, which I agree. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to line the bottom of this triangle remnant up with the bottom of the flap. And then I'm going to just cut it off. My next big event is not until September. So I think I'll be all okay. I see Kathleen asked me. Um, we have decided to postpone our anniversary trip to the Keys. So I have, I think I mentioned before that we were planning on um, going to the Keys for our anniversary in August. And um, we're not gonna do that uh, we are still going to go to the Keys, but um, we are not going to do it in, um, in August anymore. Okay, so now I'm going to take two of these. And I'm going to, these are the three inch by two inch uh, bits that have been folded in half. So let's see the, let me talk about my trip. So I'll start there. So I went to Seattle for, um, gosh, just the weekend. It feels like so much longer. <laughs> so I left early Friday morning to go to Seattle. The flight out was just okay, I would say. Just okay. Um, 
yeah we're going to go either at the end of september or the beginning of october so the middle of october towards the end of october prices in key west rise they because there's a thing there called fantasy fest it's kind of um halloween sort of halloween related it's not a halloween party exactly but it is a costume and body art part party so um the prices go up way a lot for that so um we just want to get in so like i said either the first half of october before the prices start to go up for that or um uh the end of September. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this, but I'm going to line it up with the ledge, for lack of a better word, that's being made by the um, the flap that we added. Okay, so now I can just cut this off. Um, quite a bit of turbulence on the way out. Um, we had the seatbelt sign on for quite a quite a while. Um, so that's you know not always not the most fun, but no one threw up. No one threw up, so <laughs> so that was good. Um, and then um, got in, and then that night. There were two events. So there was like a sort of meet and greet mixer thing at the hotel. And then there was the welcome sort of, in lieu of the rehearsal dinner, there was a welcome reception. Um, and so those were pretty much back to back. Um, so I went down for that. I got in, I showered immediately, got to get rid of the airport germs, you know, and then, um, and I didn't get sick on this trip at all. So thank you very much. Who's ever in charge of that? <laughs> Determining whether or not I get sick on any particular travels. All right. Okay, so now we have this piece. So when it's all folded up together, it'll look like this on the back. Okay, so this is, oh, I just need to put tape on this flap. Um, so we went to the little welcome mixer thing, and then we went to the rehearsal dinner thing, and then I asked the bride, I said, you know, when do you want me at your getting ready spot to do your nails and she said nine and so the bride's it's the bride's uh sister was like my best friend in high school and then the the bride is the younger sister she was two years younger than us so you know she was always around um and we are quite good friends in our own right as well but so the bride's sister and i were the ones, so we decided to walk over together to be there at nine. So we got up early, went and she, well, she got ready because, um, you know, she's, was in the wedding part, in the wedding. So she was supposed to be getting her hair and makeup done by the hair and makeup person who was there. All right, so now this is ready to go on, okay? So, so, you know, we were up late the night before, up early the next day to be walk over to this place at 9 a.m. Okay, so where this is going to go is it's going to go right here, and that's going to create a pocket here and a pocket and a pocket here. Okay? All right. Okay, so now we just need to um, add these to the back of this in the same way just like this and it's going to create a pocket as well so we're gonna fold along the remaining two three inch by uh, two inch bits and turn them into tabs and attach them to the larger piece all right yeah it is always good when no one throws up <laughs> because like on a plane you know once one person gets going it can really make it a bad day for for several people <laughs> so 
Um, so, so she and I get up, and the first snafu in our little plan is none of the coffee shops are open. Um, on they're all closed on Saturday and Sunday, or and we were just like, what on earth? So, <laughs> so we're walking around. We finally find a place that's open, and then we later find out that the reason nothing is open is because our hotel is within Amazon's campus. So where we were in Seattle, we were on the Amazon campus. Like all the wedding stuff was taking place on the Amazon campus. Um, and so this is not a place where people like live 24-7. Um, and so they just don't really have any reason to have a lot of things open on the weekends. There just aren't people around. Um, so... Um, so that was just weird to see Starbucks's that were closed on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, that was, I don't think I've ever come across that. So that was weird. But anyway, so we finally found a coffee shop open, uh, literally named local coffee shop, although it is a chain. Um, so we found a coffee shop open. We were able to get some coffee. We get to the Airbnb where they're doing the getting ready stuff and it is total chaos total chaos as far like I've never seen anything like it and then the sister of the bride kind of tried to warn me the night before but I don't think she really like I think she just failed to like impress upon me the full scope of what I was going to be <laughs> dealing with because she said in the most like kind of exhausted defeated tone and I, I, I like I see it now in hindsight I didn't take any pictures either, Candy. I'm just hoping for like a website I can download stuff from because I didn't take any pictures either. That I think that makes me definitely a bad crafter. Yeah, she didn't want me to know. She didn't want me to know. But like I could, now that I'm looking back, I could see how haunted her eyes were. <laughs> but she just had looked at me and said, this is the most complicated wedding I've ever been a part of. And, you know, her sister is, she has a lot of professional obligations. She has a lot of money. And I just thought, and, you know, and I knew going in because there were so many events involved with the wedding that, that it was like a, whatever. I, I, I expected a certain level of extraness, I guess. But, like, because I'm a normal person, because I'm just a, <laughs> just a normie poor um, I could not have fathomed, you know, what, what I, yeah, I just, I, I just, just could not, could not have fathomed. So, all right. Now, I will say, because I'm pretty calm in emergencies, um, I'm very good at weddings behind the scenes, you know, um, and so, like, it probably wasn't a bad idea that I was at the getting ready house from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, and that's probably because while I was there, I put out numerous fires. <laughs> so, um, you know, just because I was calm and not actually in the wedding party. So I didn't, I mean, I, if I wasn't doing the nails, I had nothing to be doing. You know what I mean? And so I was very available for things. So, um, but like when I, when I got there, I was informed that the wedding dress wasn't finished. So, I mean, that's just, that's just that the custom wedding gown was not complete. And when I got there, it was in the dryer because it had just been washed. Um, and then it was going to be, and then it was going to be hemmed. It had not been hemmed. It had not been hemmed. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. All right. So now this is ready. So now we just have to add tape to the flaps. Well, I, yeah, no stress, no stress. <laughs> There's no gown, no stress. 
Now, luckily, there were two gowns because uh, there was a reception gown and a wedding gown. So it was like worst case scenario, there was just the going to be wearing of the reception gown to everything, I guess. But even so, I was just like, so, um, I mean, I fixed an earring. One of the bride's earrings broke. I fixed an earring. What else did I do? Um, someone got airbrush makeup foundation on the wedding gown. I had baby wipes in my nail bag, was able to get that clean. I had the tape that you use to tape um, a garment to your skin. So like, you know, so that like if you want like a, a strap to lay an exact specific way, they make this tape so you can like tape it to your the front of your chest or something like that, right? And so anyway, I had that tape, which ended up being one of the attempts to quickly hem the dress was to try and use that tape. Um, in the end, the dress had a raw edge. It just got cut off. And you know what? No one noticed. Like, it, you couldn't even tell. But I was just like, what? <laughs> like, I was like, if I was the bride, my blood pressure would be <laughs> like... Can't imagine. Can't imagine. So, uh, yeah, when I got there, I couldn't do the nails because the bride was still writing her vows. That was still happening. So, um, so yeah, I was there from 9 to 1. And at 1, oh, I don't even want to know what happened to that person like <laughs> that I am sure like once all the dust has settled uh yeah yeah okay so now I'm just going to cut through uh the intersection of this score line and this score line so I'm going to put that on my mat so that it forms an x and then I'm going to cut put the wire in the middle of that x and cut through it and that's a quick and easy way to miter your corners Um, I brought my steamer from home when I travel. I brought my travel steamer and I just thought to myself, I'll throw it in my bag. Why not? They might want an extra steamer at the Airbnb. So I had my extra steamer. It's still in Seattle, by the way, because it was such chaos when I left. I just told my friend who is the sister of the bride. I was like, you know what? No one needs to be responsible for the steamer. I don't need it back. It's just my travel steamer. It wasn't expensive because I, it's specifically so in case it gets destroyed while traveling, you know, so what, you know what, let's just not put that on anyone's to-do list and I'll just, I'll just get a new travel steamer. <laughs> just like. So at one o'clock is when, okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to line this up. So this is that pocket from earlier. I'm going to line this up so that the point, the points meet, okay? And I'm only gonna remove the tape from just the bottom just for now. So, um, so yeah, so now I don't have a travel steamer anymore. So the next time I travel, I'm gonna have to get a new steamer, but that is really okay. That is really okay. All right, I'm just gonna fold this because I want it to be um, not so slippery on my, on my table. So I'm just gonna line this up. The most important thing to me is that the point matches up. Okay. All right, so now that that is in place, I'm gonna go ahead and burnish it. And then I can peel this tape and we'll close it up. All right. So at one o'clock, nails are still not done. I've been working solidly for five hours doing who knows what. Like I can't even remember half the stuff that happened. Uh, but I have been working the whole time. Or not five hours. Nine to, nine to one is only four. Oh no, that is, that's only four hours. That's only four hours. So I've been working for four hours. The photographer is calling. He is having a nervous breakdown because 
they were supposed to be taking pictures. However, whatever. Um, it looks like they're not even going to get out of the Airbnb until like two o'clock. And so I just say to the bride, I'm like, look, I have to get ready. You've got a lot going on. Why don't you just go do your photos and all of that, like finish getting ready here, staple your dress together, whatever. I'm going to go back to my hotel room very quickly, throw an outfit on and, um, you know, be there. So, okay. So I just trimmed off the corners cause there was like, if anything was poking off. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing, which is we're going to just stick it down to this piece. Okay. So let's just ref do a refresher on our pieces. So we have this piece, which is six and a half by eight and seven eighths. We have this piece, which is seven and a half by eight and seven eighths scored at six and a half. Set that aside, set that aside. Then we have this piece, which is six and a half by eight and seven eighths scored at five and a half. This is the piece that we're going to attach this to. So it's going to form this cool looking pocket. Okay. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to do it the same way where I'm only going to remove the tape from just this bottom. I am not going to put paper on before I put the pocket on. Um, and the reason why is because I prefer, even though it's a little bit more difficult to slide my paper down into the pocket because then it covers all of the flaps and things and it makes it easier to put tags in and out of the pockets. Okay. So lining up with the score line. Okay. We're lining up with the score line. Press into place, flip it open, and burnish. Okay, all right, so now once that's been done, if you want to, you can run a line of tape over this. You know, um, like I said, I'm gonna probably put some, um, paper as a liner so it's not that big of a deal but you know you can also just get a similar effect by putting some tape down and that'll at least make it a little easier so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the remaining tape okay removing all the remaining tape so all eight pieces of tape And then I'm going to just kind of go out to the sides and hit the sides. All right. So now we have this pocket. So we've got pocket here, pocket here, pocket here, pocket here. All right. And so then this is going to go on here. Okay. So it's going to flap open. We'll decorate here. This will be um, photo mats. And then... This will be photo mats and this will be photo mats. So we'll have two, four, six full size photos and then this foldy pocket thing. Okay. All right. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to put uh, metal discs on this. And let's do some magnets and metal metal pieces and actually this piece is kind of heavy not this piece not this piece where did I put it here it is nope that's not it I lost it oh here it is okay this piece is kind of heavy so I think I'll do magnet to magnet Whew. so I said you go do your photos I'll quickly run back to the hotel remember I walked over so we're all running around the Amazon campus is what we're doing um, and so I say let me just go back to the hotel let me shower get ready real quick um, and then I'm just spacing out the uh, magnets from each other so they won't snap together 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put them, let me get glue dots. All right, so then what I'm going to do is let's put them down, red line up. I'm going to put a little bit of tape on them to keep them stuck to the back of this. All right. And then they're going to match up with this piece. So actually, let's let's stick it down. So I'm going to put tape here and on the back of my photo mat. Did the cats forgive me for being gone for a few days? Yeah, actually, this is the nicest the cats have ever been um, when I returned to something. So normally... When Mr. Lifeguard and I get back from things, the cats are very standoffish. Um, but they were just happy to see me and they were nice and cuddled up by my legs when I sat in the chair. So that was, you know, like I said, it's the nicest they've ever been. <laughs> it's the nicest they've ever been because cats are kind of monsters. So yeah, very, yeah, exactly, Gretchen. Very suspicious, very suspicious. <laughs> cannot cannot be trusted okay so I'm just gonna line these two up like so and what I do is I kind of pull this down until the edge hits the score line so I'm not pulling it all the way down to my desk and then I fold it towards the back and then I press it into place okay the way the reason I do it that way is you can see how it kind of bumps out this piece. There's like a little bit of a lip there. Um, that way I know that I'm not going to roll, that this is not too tight here. I know that this is a plenty loose seam. So I'm not, when I fold this shut, I'm not folding any of this piece on this edge here. And that just makes it easier to stay closed. So we're going to do the same thing again, just on this opposite side. Okay, so I'm going to put tape, a line of tape here. I know, they have definitely been replaced by pod creatures. It's true. It's true. Clearly, And I'm just going to actually snap these into place and we'll deal with them in a second. All right, so I'm just going to burnish and then stick these two together. And uh, again, it's the same thing. I'm just going to kind of pull this down until it, the score line catches on the edge. Um, so my magnets, I got from a place called CMS Magnets, and the last time I checked, they were, they didn't have them, um, so probably like a supply chain thing. So what I would search for is this, okay, and I'll write it out in just a second, so let me just get this folded over, all right, all right, so now that this has been folded over, Oh wait, that was terrible. Okay, I'm gonna um, undo this because I was like, that was a disaster. I'm gonna undo it and while it's drying, I'll write out what to search for if you're looking for magnets exactly like this. All right, so let me just peel these apart. Okay, and I'll just let them 
go and I'll go get the whiteboard so I can write it down, the search string. So if you're looking for magnets like this, this is your search string. So one half inch by one thirty second inch, okay? Neodymium mag uh, and sometimes rare earth magnets. There you go. All right. That's that's what to search for, and that is going to, somebody should have them. Somebody should have them. But uh, like I said, CMS Magnetics uh, or CMS Magnets, CM, I think it's CMS Magnetics. Uh, so this is where I, mine were from. Um, but they, they were totally out of this size. And they were also out of the one inch. I do also have the one inch by one thirty second. So I do also have these. Um, but they were also, they were out of both those sizes. So, um, all right, so you can go ahead and take a screenshot of that. So you have it forever. Okay, so, oh, I just got a test or a text that um, people who were at the wedding are testing positive, positive for the 1-9. Fantastic. Here it was. I thought I escaped. I thought I escaped. All right, so they're recommending testing even if asymptomatic. I don't know where you can get tested if you're asymptomatic. I guess I can just go get a test from like CVS or someplace like that, right? All right, um, so wonderful, exactly, wonderful, fantastic. Um, so, okay. <laughs> I think we'll be able to reuse this tape. So I'm just gonna wave this a little bit and help it dry. Luckily, I do feel fine, so um, I'd probably be sick by now, right? Unless I got on the plane ride home, but then I wouldn't be wedding sick. I don't know. I don't know what, uh, what it is anymore. That makes sense, Gretchen, that there's not a wedding or large event where, where some people don't test positive. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just, um, I'm just gonna line it up on this side and I'm just gonna leave some breathing room between the score lines. So what I, what I do is I'm gonna put it and I'll bring it up, hopefully you can see. It's kind of hard because it's so small, but um, I've basically left, you know, a 16th of an inch in between the edge of this piece and the score line on this piece. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add Oh, okay. I'll do that then, Ella. I'm sure TRICARE will pay. I'll just go to CVS and ask.
Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close this up and then close this up and then I'm going to just burnish over where the magnets are. All right, and then the, they're stuck there. So I'm going to go ahead and tape over them. Okay, and then I'm going to do one more round only because, again, this is kind of heavy. Kind of heavy. So normally I wouldn't worry, but as I said, this piece is kind of a large, it's kind of a large piece. We're going to put tabs in it. Let's just not take any chances. All right. Okay, so then this one gets closed. Just going to burnish over as well. Okay, so to finish the wedding story in terms of my participation with the nails, then we get to, I get there and the bride has thankfully moved out of like the anxiety range and is just now in the, hey, I planned a really good party, like anything that goes wrong at this point, there's nothing I can do about it, like the acceptance phase, you know? And um, she had already taken all the like close-ups of the rings and the hands and all of that with the photographer. So she was like, let's just do a, a, a nice subtle gloss and like call it a day. So that's what we did. <laughs> So we just did a nice subtle gloss and we called it a day. So I dragged around that nail kit for like however many hours and we didn't even really need it. I mean, we needed it ultimately in the end, but I, I will show you the nails that I did for the wedding just so you can see them because they're not going to be in any pictures. <laughs> um, so I can show them to you, but I just was like, <laughs> I just, I died inside a little. I did die inside a little. Actually, I think Mr. Lifeguard did order through the post office. So I'm going to ask him if they showed up and then maybe I'll just do that. All right. Okay. So this piece is now done. So we're ready to move into the decorating phase with it. So I'm going to go ahead and do a recording break here so that we have the construction of it in one little section. But this is essentially, this is how it works, okay? So let me get um, get the board here. Okay, so it's gonna go on the back of this piece. This is the one with the gigantic library card pocket. And it's gonna go on the back here, all right? So it's gonna look like this in the book. And then it'll open like this and we'll do some kind of cool decor thing there. Photo here, photo here. And then it'll open again, photo here, photo here, photo here, photo here. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yes, Gretchen, they did. Yes, Gretchen, that is a thing that happened. <laughs> so I'm going to just, um, I'm going to do a recording break here. Uh, so thank you. <laughs> uh, so if you're watching live, just hang tight. Nothing's going to change for you um if you're watching in the archives or on the youtube playlist go ahead and click to the next video in the series to see how we decorate this thanks so much for watching everyone 
I am live Thursdays at 2 p.m. Eastern USA time and 9 p.m. Eastern USA time. Most Thursdays, uh, we may be back tonight. I don't know. I, uh, I don't know if my uh, ancient decrepit body <laughs> is going to be able to manage two shows after all my traveling. Uh, but we shall see. We shall see. Um, I will post on Facebook either way. So I'll post if class is not happening or if class is happening. I'll post either way on my Facebook page and in the Catherine Scraps Facebook group. Links to all of that in the video description as well as to supplies I've used, etc. So thanks so much for watching everyone and I'll see you next time. Bye now.